So it's been a while. So I'm um, sorry for being gone so long and sorry for not making as much videos. I have to open up like that for a few reasons. For those who go on my community tabs, you already know what the situation with me was. But for those who don't know, I got robbed. <laughs> and they took my recording equipment. They, they took a couple of stuff. And uh, yeah, I had to basically rebuild back everything. Still trying to do that. And two, as you know, I have midterms, so I wasn't able to upload um, as frequently as I wanted to. But goddamn, guys, I've been gone for, what, a week or two now? Yeah, I didn't expect at least 200 of y'all to unsubscribe. Goddamn. <laughs> Don't leave me in the dust, guys. But, um, yeah, so, as you guys know, today is when Frank's Night Out is supposed to be premiering. It's premiering right now, if you, you can't tell. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Let's get into the video. April 30th. This has been the worst night of my life. I can't tell anyone what I have done tonight. Not even Manny. Even a three-year-old knows what I've done is horrific. But I can't keep this to myself. That's why I'm writing this diary. To keep my sanity. The night started out fine. Me and Robert went out to drink and watch some baseball. But things started getting out of hand after I left to go to the bathroom. I sat down and took a sip of my beer. However, it tasted funny. I didn't think much of it at first, but then I started feeling woozy. Before I knew it, I was out. I woke up in the trunk of a car. I have no idea how I got there or how much time had passed. All I knew is that I was in trouble and I had to get out of there. I tried banging on the walls and screaming, but no one could hear me. There was no use trying, so I decided to wait it out. After waiting in the dark for a few minutes, I noticed I was missing my pants. They must have been stolen by the owner of the car. I could only wonder what they want with me, or what they were gonna do to me. I also remembered what Susan had said to me earlier. Don't stay out too late, you have to take Greg to school tomorrow. Looks like that's not gonna fucking happen, Susan. After around half an hour of driving, the car finally stopped. I overheard some talking from outside, but I couldn't make out any words. Suddenly, the door was opened. A man tied a bandana around my eyes and led me into a dingy garage. I could tell I was in the bad part of Plainview. I had only been here to buy some weed sometimes for when Greg is an asshole or when Manny goes on his rants about Fox News. I'm not gonna lie, I was very scared. I was then led into a room and kicked to the ground. Then my blindfold was taken off. I couldn't believe who was in front of me. It was Robert Jefferson, the man who I had been drinking with just a few hours earlier. The man I have lived next to for 20 years. I had no idea what he would want from me. We've been friends for so long. Until he reminded me. You fucked my wife, Frank! Shit. I didn't think he'd ever find that out. Yes, me and Linda had an affair. I can't deny that. But it only lasted a few weeks, since neither of us could live with the guilt. But still, I had no idea how Robert could have known, until he said, Manny told me, Manny, that little shit, had apparently walked in on me and Linda and then called Robert a cucktard. How does he even know what that means? Honestly, bro, fuck Manny. Anyways, Robert clearly didn't take that news well. He kicked Linda out and Rowley is now in therapy. You ruined my life, so now I'm gonna ruin yours. He had no idea how correct he was right there, and I would have never guessed what he meant by it. Knock him out, Benny. What? I had a short bout of consciousness, but couldn't grasp what was going on. The world was spinning. All I heard was beeping and the muffled sounds of some people talking. I fell asleep again, dipping in and out of consciousness every so often. But still, I couldn't understand what was happening. The last thing I recall was being dragged down the hallway. I woke back up in some kind of gender supply closet, with a searing pain in my lower half. It took me some time to be able to grasp the situation. Reaching down, I felt my burning groin. Yeah, he was gone, reduced to atoms. There was nothing there. I was so smooth. So horrifically smooth. 
My penis was gone. I was in shock, to say the least. But I couldn't just lay on the floor and cry about my missing penis. I had to get out of here. I mustered up the strength I still had to pull myself up and peer through the keyhole. It seemed that the only thing keeping me in was a locked door and that Benny kid guarding it. I knew I had to get crafty. Everything okay, Benny? Yep. I sold his pants to that yogurt guy. Yeah, so my pants are now in the hands of some yogurt guy. Whatever the fuck that means. There were more pressing issues at hand. I searched the supply closet for anything that I might be able to use. The closet didn't have much. Mostly just cleaning supplies, tools, and for some godforsaken reason, a half-empty bottle of lube. Armed with a mop handle and a bottle of Windex. I was ready to come out of the closet. I, I, I mean, make my escape. Yes. I tied a cloth around my head to look more badass. Yeah, I know how fucking stupid I am. The door was locked, so I had to somehow trick Benny into opening it up. For some reason, this was the first idea to pop into my head. My cock hole is leaking! Somehow it worked. Benny ran to get some duct tape for my issue, and when he opened the door, I attacked. After knocking Benny unconscious with my mop, as well as possibly blinding the poor kid, I picked up his shotgun and snuck down the hall. I definitely wasn't in the same place I had been before I was knocked unconscious and my dick was detached. Didn't take me long to find out that I was in the basement of the Jefferson's Country Club. But why would Robert take me here? I quietly moved toward the end of the hallway, where the staircase is. Right now, I was on a mission to retrieve my stolen schlong, but I had never been down here before. Still, I heard somewhere that a penis can be reattached if it happens within a few hours of amputation, so I continued forward. I figured my manhood had been hidden somewhere close to Robert. It was just a matter of finding his office. But as I reached the stairwell, I looked into the room to the right of me and saw something I did not expect. Robert was running a fully decked out meth lab in the basement of his country club. It was like some shit you'd see in Breaking Bad. No wonder the Jeffersons were so rich. The country club seemed to be the type of money laundering scheme for this drug business. As I stood in awe of the lab, I was frightened by the sound of an alarm overhead. Robert must have found out I was gone. I had to make a run for it. The castrated man is on the loose. I repeat, his no dick having ass castrated man is on the loose. Into the meth lab I went. I ran into the lab. Inside, there was a set of stairs leading to a catwalk. I sprinted up the stairs as I heard Robert's guards coming down the hallway. Around the corner was Robert's office. However, as I turned the bend, the door slowly opened. I looked around. His guards were all over the entrance. Robert trapped me. I was a pawn in his game. Menacingly, he stepped onto the catwalk. Well, well, I've been expecting you, Frank Hefley. Why don't you follow me into my office? I had no choice. After being ordered to give my shotgun up, I sat down in front of Robert's desk. Robert took his seat at the other side. Robert began to lecture me about how he planned the revenge out. He had started plotting weeks ago and revealed something shocking. Linda wasn't kicked out of the house. Linda was dead. And I'm gonna be the next one to go, after he's done torturing me at least. For now, Robert stated there were two things he wanted me to see. I couldn't believe my ears when he listed the first course of action. I am going to eat your penis, Frank. But Robert, wouldn't that make you gay? It seemed I mentioned the one fatal flaw with his plan. With Robert distracted, I grabbed the pen from his desk and lunged at him. I stabbed Robert in the neck with his pen and hid behind the desk. Picking up his pistol, I prepared for a shootout with the guards. Robert was writhing on the floor, with blood spreading out of his neck. I couldn't believe what I had done. I didn't want him to die, but I was too preoccupied to help him. I heard footsteps coming towards the room, followed by a voice. A voice I did not expect to hear. I must be going into a castration-induced manic episode, I thought to myself. You've been more vigilant than I expected. I guess I have to take matters into my own hands. Yet, as the door opened, my fears were confirmed. S S Susan? I was shocked. 
my wife, the mother of my children, was trying to kill me. I know what I did was wrong, but I never thought Susan finding out would lead her over the edge as it is. Give me your penis prank! The bullet hit my finger, blasting it right off. As I clutched my hand in pain, Susan ran over and grabbed my severed penis. Susan ran out the door. I knew she was going to do awful with my dick. Damn right, your dick's small as fuck, boy. So I picked up Robert's gun and pushed myself. I stumbled out the office to see Susan dangling my penis over a vat of acid. There was only one thing I could do to save my penis. I shot Susan straight in the heart, but it didn't matter. My penis fell right into the acid. I killed my wife. For nothing. Yet, it felt different than I expected. Adrenaline surged through my body. The idea of taking a life was so horrific, so taboo yet. <laughs> so, so exciting. <laughs> it was a pleasure greater than any orgasm I have ever experienced. I was filled with the urge for more. I shot Robert's guards without remorse, every last one. Most of them were teenagers who worked at the country club, so they hesitated to shoot me, making them easy targets. Where are my balls, Benny? <laughs> Where are my balls, Benny? Robert, Robert ate them. Wrong answer, fat ass. <laughs> Everyone was dead. Everyone was dead and I'm glad. Dead. I dragged Susan's body out of the country club and put her in my trunk. It was 4 a.m. I grabbed the shovel from home and drove to a forest outside of Plainview. <laughs> I, I buried Susan. I buried the bitch. Afterwards, I parked outside of the local strip club where I began writing this diary. Since then, some things have happened. I went home and picked up Manny. Greg and Roderick can live on their own, but Manny needed to be dealt with. He is the reason my penis is gone after all. And I threw Manny out the window. Yeet! I needed to get away. So I drove onto the highway. And so, I drove out of plain view. I can't write where I'm going in case anyone reads this. But I'm going to find somewhere where no one can find me. Somewhere where I can kill in peace. <laughs> And that was Frank's Night Out. That was the wackiest story I've ever read. Nah, I know not November was a hundred times weirder. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Right, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Purgatory Enigma, Instagram at um, Tales of an Enigma. Um, join my Discord, the Hadal Zone. And uh, yeah, um, follow me on Reddit. And um, there's not much I can tell you else here. Oh, one more thing. Horror stories will be coming out on the channel during the midterm break. Um, yeah, I want to expand the, don't worry. I, as I said in my plans for 2022 video, like, as I said, not going to stop doing Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but I am going to do horror content. Mm, I am going to do that because I do want to. All right. Um, that's all I have to say. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. If I seem sad, that's because midterms are stressing me out. I'm, I'm genuinely dying here.